What's up, friends? Welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thank you so much, as always, for taking some time out of your day and joining me. Always appreciate it. We finished up another OTA session. It's not going to be my main topic today. Did not get to attend uh, Tuesday's practice. I think really the most noteworthy thing from the entirety of the practice is just who was absent. So without further ado, let's jump into that right away. Per Matt Schneiderman uh, on Twitter, this was the list of Packers who were not at training camp. That includes Mason Crosby, J.K. Scott, Devin Funchess, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, Kevin King, Williams, Jair, Redmond, Savage, Dylan, Amos, Sullivan, Burks, Bradley, Gary, Garvin, both Smiths, Randy Ramsey, Lucas Patrick, Bakhtiari, Nijman, Jenkins, Turner, MVS, Tunyon, Malik Taylor, Jay Sternberger, Lewis, Lowry, Lancaster, Kingsley, Kiki, Kenny Clark. That is a laundry list of Packers who are not at non-mandatory OTAs. And it should be mentioned that these are not mandatory. And a lot of Packers after mandatory mini camps found their way back home, wherever they were working out, etc. And those were the Packers that were not at practice. So n- there wasn't a ton from the, the sound of it that actually happened at Packers practice. It sounded like Jordan Love got the majority, actually all of the reps at quarterback, which seems that they are continuing to put as much on him as possible, see how he responds to everything. But um, again, mostly a nondescript OTA. So figured I would discuss something a little bit different today. And I wanted to go over and kind of just look at this Packers roster. So let's assume whatever happens with the quarterback situation is going to happen. As of right now, Aaron Rodgers is still on the roster. So if we assume that, let's just think about what is the biggest thing that the Packers lost this offseason, right? So, you know, I, to me, unequivocally, it has to be Corey Lindsley, right? That However good you think Corey Lindsley was last year, I promise you he was better. He was fantastic a season ago. And even though he missed a couple games here and there with injury, he had a phenomenal season, was really the anchor of that offensive line. He, of course, had Elton Jenkins playing next to him. That is a major loss for the Packers. I know they get Josh Myers. I know they get Royce Newman as an interior offensive lineman. Of course, they've got some other up-and-coming players like a John Runyon Jr., but it's hard to say that the interior of the offensive line is going to be as good or anywhere near as good when you lose a player the caliber of Corey Lindsley. Add on to that, that there's a strong chance that if David Bakhtiari is not ready for the season, which I think he just recently mentioned that he's halfway through um, on you know rehabbing and his progress and everything like that, that is not a great sign to, for those who are hoping that he's going to be available on week one. If he's only halfway at this point, you kind of quickly do the math and the odds that he's ready you know, three months from now aren't, you know, isn't great. I mean, look at it this way, right? He was... December is when he got hurt and you end of December, you know, June 16th is, you know, is today's date. So, you know, he's about six months in, if that's halfway, that's not great. Now, I, I think he's probably not putting all the numbers, you know, all the math together here and thinking of it too uh, deeply, but, you know, even still, it's tough to say if, you know, if he's feeling halfway after six months, it's tough to say, well, he's going to be ready to go three months from now. So whatever date that may be, who knows, but there's a decent chance Bakhtiari's out, which means your other big bad best interior offensive lineman Elton Jenkins very well could be playing on the exterior at offensive tackle filling in for David Bakhtiari. So you go from Corey Lindsley and Elton Jenkins and what Lucas Patrick a season ago to potentially maybe Lucas Patrick's still there but you know uh, you know, was it Josh Myers at center? Maybe either Lucas Patrick, John Runyon Jr., Royce Newman, those three guys battling out for a spot. Maybe Ben Braden gets in that conversation. But make no mistake about it, that's a significant decrease on the interior of the offensive line. And even when Elton Jenkins kicks back inside, and even if Josh Myers looks the part, you're still losing a significant player. And there's no way that Josh Myers is going to come in and be as good as Corey Lindsley was a season ago. So even if it's Elton Jenkins at left guard and Lucas Patrick at right guard, the same as a season ago, there's no doubt that, you know, even if, if Josh Myers comes in and has a really nice rookie season, he's still not going to be Corey Lindsley, right? So the interior of the offensive line is likely going to take a hit, especially if Elton Jenkins has to go out and play tackle for any significant period of time as well. So you leave it just at that alone. Just leave it there and say, okay, that's probably where we're, you know, where we're at and you can live with that, but it's not just that. If you look around the NFC North, 
While the Green Bay Packers have maybe taken a little bit of a hit on the interior of the offensive line, the NFC North has completely revamped the interior of their defensive lines. So let's start off with the Minnesota Vikings. First of all, Michael Pierce, their big free agent acquisition a season ago, a mammoth, massive run-stopping defensive tackle, one of the best in the league, opted out all last season. Now he's back, fresh legs. That's a you know player that you have to be cognizant of on the interior of any defensive line. He is a very good football player. Now they go out and they get Delvin Tomlinson from the New York Giants, a well-rounded defensive tackle that you pair with Michael Pierce and good luck on early downs running on the interior of that defensive line. And oh, by the way, this week, they go out and they get Sheldon Richardson, adding in another piece to the interior of that defensive line. They completely revamp that group and go from a, a unit that completely struggled a season ago to having Pierce, Tomlinson, and Richardson. That is a major glow up in one offseason for one position group. That is that is major, major for the Minnesota Vikings. So you, you talk about a, a battle that Green Bay was able to win more often than not, their interior offensive line against the Vikings interior of their defensive line. Gone is Corey Lindsley. Maybe Elton Jenkins is kicked outside. And now you've got Pierce Tomlinson and Sheldon Richardson coming in and really, you know, amplifying the interior defensive line for the Vikings. So that's a big change. For the Bears, not as significant, but getting Eddie Goldman back, who also opted out a season ago, is also a pretty big uh, get for the Bears. And again, just a player that you could tell they were missing a season ago and him pairing with Akeem Hicks on the inside, definitely not a, a duo that you want to go in, you know, against on any regular basis without a really strong interior offensive line. And then the Lions, they trade for Michael Brockers. So that is a big time deal. And Michael Brockers, he may not have the sacks and the numbers and things like that. He is a consistent pain in the butt and just clogs everything up and makes everything more difficult for you. And then they get Levi and Wuzurike in the second round at defensive tackle. And then they get a Lee McNeil in the third round at defensive tackle. So just between the three divisional opponents, they go out and get, you know, they're adding in some way, shape, or form, Michael Pierce, Delvin Tomlinson, Sheldon Richardson, Eddie Goldman, Michael Brockers, Levi and Wuzurike, and Ali McNeil. That is a pretty big deal. Two top 100 picks and some very good veteran talent along the defensive line. So six games, and as we move to a 17-game season, you know, obviously the division is still of the utmost importance, but six out of 17 it matters, but it's still just kind of like, you know, basically a third of your season. But they've got some other really tough teams that have really good defensive lines as well. You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers that they'll be playing, Stephon Tuitt, Cam Hayward, um, Tyson Alualu. The Cincinnati Bengals have DJ Reader and Larry Ogunjobi. The Washington football team has Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne, two of the, you know, one of the better tandems in the NFL. The Baltimore Ravens have Brandon Williams and Calais Campbell. And then, oh, by the way, you know, three of the better interior rushers, Green Bay will get a look at as well in Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, and J.J. Watt. So this is a, a team that is going to be facing some darn good defensive linemen and defensive tackles and interior pass rushers and run-stuffing specialists. And now they're doing it without the benefit of one of their best players, period, a season ago in Corey Lindsley. So this is going to be a very interesting, you know, offensive line and how they shape everything. When does David Bakhtiari come back? Where does Elton Jenkins play? Are Royce Newman and Josh Myers really in the conversation for starting spots? It certainly looks like both of them are, but especially Myers at center. Is Patrick starting? Does Ben Braden get a shot? You know, is, is Billy Turner for sure the right tackle? Like the offensive line as a whole has some question marks. And I think we like a lot of the answers and a lot of the talent that is on this Packers offensive line and a lot of the up and coming talent. But as you look at some of the opponents that they're going to be facing and some of the talent that's now going to be in the division that wasn't there a season ago, it's going to be of the utmost importance that guys like John Runyon Jr. and Royce Newman and Josh Myers and those type of players are up to the task because they're going to have some very difficult opponents from them almost week in and week out. And again, you look at the division, they're going to be bringing it on the interior. And you look, go, you go back and watch Aaron Jones. He made a lot of his, uh, you know, he, he did very well, I should say, running in between, you know, the guard and the center, whether it be Corey Lindsley and Lucas Patrick, whether it be Corey Lindsley and Elton Jenkins, he made bank in the interior of the offensive line. 
Defensive lines in the NFC North weren't as strong. That was one of their strengths. Now it could be reversed. So if you're looking at this Packers team and saying, let's assume Aaron Rodgers is back, hey, they've gained in a lot of spots. Their defense could be better. They get Eric Stokes, you know, on, on offense. They, you know, get Josh Myers to fill in for Corey Lindsley. Like they've they've obviously made some improvements in keeping this team, you know, intact. They get Devin Funches back, Amari Rodgers, et cetera. You might say, hey, they're going to be as good as, you know, if not better than they were a season ago. They just didn't lose that much. I think you have to take a closer look at the interior offensive line and say, hey, that was a spot that was a major strength a season ago. Now we've got some question marks. How do these young guys respond? And can it look just as good as it did, or at least close enough where it's still a strength for the Packers? And again, I've said this before, if there's any coaching you know group that I trust on the Packers, it is Adam Stenovich, Luke Buckus, and that entire offensive line group. I think they do a great job with the talent, and I expect those guys on the interior, even though they're young guys, to continue to get better, continue to grow. And hopefully, especially for guys like Myers, John Runyon Jr., Royce Newman, they can meet their ceiling sooner rather than than later. That's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Pack a Day podcast. I'll be right back here tomorrow. Make sure to check out Dusty, Steve, and Sarah on today's audio version. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go!